Welcome everybody. This is the uh, training webinar uh, here tonight and our topic tonight is maximize gains, minimize trades. First we got to knock out our standard disclaimer so we can get over to some charts and look at some trade setups. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar. Other webinars including the live trading room are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And of course, everybody in here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right, let's get over to uh, uh, screen one. I've got a uh, Russell chart teed up, ready to go. And here's how I'd like to kick this off, okay? So when we, when we say mi maximize gains, minimize trades, what does that mean to you? Let's just start with that as a fundamental basis. Here, I'll put it right on this chart. What and the heck are we talking about? Aren't you supposed to take a lot of trades to make money? You're contradicting yourself, Charles. Maximize gains and, and minimize trades. That makes no sense. You're an idiot. What are you talking about? Trade, trade, trade. It's the whole reason we do this, to make money. Toby says, one and done if you can get it. Lewis has nailed it. Don't stay in the market too long. Dave is nailing it. You guys, everybody here, guys and gals tonight. Okay, so when we say the word trade, what does trade mean? Trade equals what? If I was going to type in something here, what would it be? Trade, trading, trading is a whole, trades, trading equals what? I have to fill something in here. What would it be? What is it? Is it make a ton of money? Should I type that in? Make a ton of money. There we go. Right? Ton, capital T-O-N, make a ton of money. It's time to make some money. How many thumbs up? You with me on that? Lewis says, shortest time to get profits and get done. Trading equals, and those of you who are the eternal optimists might argue with me on this, equals risk. Trading is risk. It's risky. Most traders I've met in my life, and I've been trading for a very long time, 23 years to be exact, I've met a ton of traders all over the world. And as a whole, I have to tell you, they're a pretty optimistic bunch. So most traders, when you'd say the word trade equals, what would they say? They'd say, wow, let's make some money. Trading equals making money. They don't fail to, they fail to look at the downside. When you are in the market, you are at risk. And risk equals risk of what? Making a ton of money? No, quite the opposite, loss, losses. The longer you are in the market, the more you are at risk of losing money. This is completely opposite of the traditional trading teaching you may have heard over the years, which is take as many trades as you can because that's how you're going to make the most money. That is just simply not true. The more trades you take, the more you risk to lose money. So that being said, what do we want to do? We want to look for optimal trade setups. When we find an optimal trade setup and it comes along and we take it, we want to maximize the money we get from that trade. Now, let me be clear about this. And I want to really emphasize this word, optimal trade setup, trade setups. Look, so let's do this. I want to do this before we go one step further. I want everybody in here tonight, we got a great turnout, type in your optimal trade setup. What is it? I'm not talking about what instrument it's on. It doesn't matter if you're trading Aussie dollar futures. I don't care what it is. You should immediately know this is the trade I like to do. What is it? 
This is a trade I like to do. Type in it. I don't care what it is. Maybe there's a couple of them. I don't know. Maybe you got three of them. I don't know what they are. We got a lot of people in here. What are? What is your optimal trade setup? Mid-band boxes. Mid-band rollovers. Predictors and mid-bands from Chuck. Good. Bounce around the mid-band. Now look. There are tons of all types of trades out of there, uh, out there. Okay, we can look at every trade under the sun. Okay, and we can say, look, you can take this and you can take that, and you can get in here and you can flip it there, and all manner of different ways of getting in and out of trades. We could show that all night long. Yes, but when I say the optimal trade setup, I mean your go-to trade setup. Now, I've chatted with a lot of traders recently, and I can tell you this. And this is a suggestion. You have your own trading account. You've got your own charts. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to just make an, a, a, an easy suggestion for you. For a short span of time, maybe a couple of days, maybe a week, I don't know, maybe a month, only do, here, I'm going to put this, only look for and trade your optimal trade setups nothing else i don't care if the pazuki trade comes along the famous wild bird mizuki trade i don't care what comes along i want you to do this for one week now look what i'm saying here is i'm not trying to disparage any other trade tons of trades come along and a lot of them are very good and a ton of them make a lot of money okay so in some in some cases you may miss some good trades if your optimal trade doesn't get hit. But what you are trying to do in the short term is apply discipline to your trading. Now, if you say, Charles, look, my favorite trade is a mid-band trade. Okay. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Here's a mid-band trade. That's acceptable. Here's a mid-band trade. That's acceptable. Here is a set shallow retracement trade. Is that acceptable? Yes or no? Here's a downtrend trade where it goes up a little further than the mid band and starts to roll over and you're trying to get almost to the to the outermost band. Maybe that's a phantom. I don't know. Is that acceptable? If you say that your optimal trade setups, and most of you have said this, is a mid band trade then then should you trade anything else should you trade anything else in the short term now listen what I want you to do though is that if you're practicing in sim I want you to try all these other trades okay if you're in a range trading a range you know um, deep retracements shallow retracements uh, you still should practice those I'm not I'm not don't misunderstand what I'm saying here I'm not saying chuck all these other trades out the window forget about them that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is you want to build confidence in the short term you want to have a go-to trade that you just know like the back of your hand and every time it comes along you want to nail it okay now that being said I want to talk about something else and this is incredibly important instrument selection those of you that have been around for a while, you've heard me say this 10,000 times, at least in nine years. Instrument selection is key to your success. You can know all the trades in the world. You can sketch them out. You can see them. You might even know how to take them. You might know how to put targets in and stops and manage the trade. You might even be an expert and object trader. But if you pick the wrong instrument, guess what's going to happen? I guarantee you, you're going to lose money. All right? I don't care what you trade. You need to go into these futures markets and try a little bit of everything until you settle in on an instrument that you like and you're very, very good at. This is another tip that's going to make you money and save you from losing money. If you don't, if you remember anything from this webinar, it is this. Instrument selection is key.
it, I'm going to say it this way, is key and critical to your success. I can't tell you how many times I will talk to traders and I'll say, well, how are you doing? Well, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of up a little bit. I'm down. I seem to nail a few and then I fall apart. I let my losses run against me. I get in hope trades. You know, I get a winning streak and then I just can't win anymore. What are you trading? Well, you know, I've got crewed up and gold. Uh, you know, I, I, I look at YM too. Well, are you making any money trading crude? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. How about gold? Are you making money on gold? Ah, I can't remember the last good gold. Well, then why are you trading it? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I don't mean to be like insulting or anything, but seriously, you've got to accept, uh, you got to assess what you're doing. Do you know how to do it? Does everybody know how to do it? How do you assess how you're doing? Here, let me phrase it a different way. How do you know how how well you're doing in assessing your trading? How do you know? What do you do? Somebody comes up to you tomorrow morning after you're done trading in the morning and, and says, how did you do and how do you know? How do you know how you did? What would you tell them? What would you tell them? I don't know. I think I made some money. I'm checking my account thing. It looks like I'm up a couple of hundred bucks. What did you trade? Uh, you know, I think I cut, cut part of a Russell trade. I don't, well, I don't know. I was in and out, tried to get NASDAQ, and I missed it. No, you don't want to do that. Here's how you do it. You go into your control center. Everybody should do this every day. I'm not kidding you. I do it all the time. Here is what you do. You go to your account performance tab. Okay? And you go in here, and this is how you see how you are doing. No, it's not replay. It's not file manager. It's not a win-loss ratio. It's none of that stuff. You can, keep, you can keep, keep a daily log and diary, but you don't really need to do that. Okay? Let me show you what you can do. Here's what you want to do. Try to write this down or memorize this or however, however you want to do it. All right. In here, you want to go to, you want to go to, uh, uh, um, uh, what the heck was it called? Darn, nah, but hold on a second. Uh, mm. One second, please. Advanced. There's, I already clicked advance. Okay, here, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay, let me start from scratch. This is really important. Okay, here, uh, uh, instrument selection and doing the, doing this look at your log thing every day is going to help you figure out. Uh, you want me to blow it up, Lewis? You can't see it? Okay, hold on. Stand by. W hold on. Let me, let me blow this up. This is really, really important. I used to talk about this all the time. I haven't talked about this in, a, in quite some time, but let me show you. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Account performance tab. Advanced. And then you're going to pick the instrument that you want to assess how you're doing on. Okay. Um, you want to go back as far as you want to go back in terms of tracking your trades. I don't know. You can go two weeks. You can go a week. You know, however, whatever, how far you want to go back. Then you want to pick the account. You want to pick the instrument that you want to examine your performance on. And then you want to hit generate. I'm not going to do it because, you know, I, I don't know what results you're going to see in here. But I, I'm not going to. But you get the idea. You hit generate. And it will show you everything you've done in that span of time. It will show you all your trades, how you did on long trades, how you did on short trades, your percentage win, how many losses you had, what your drawdown is. And I, whatever instruments you trade, let's suppose you like to trade Russell. So you put Russell in here. It'll show you all your Russell trades. So there'll be no more guesswork. You can't sit there and say, well, I don't know how I'm doing on the Russell. You should look at this, like, literally every day. If you don't do it every day, every every other day, at least. At least two, three times a, a week, you should go in here and look at how you're doing. And then from this, uh, you know, you can't. 
you can't fool this. You're not fooling the system. The system's going to tell you exactly what you did, right? And then you look at ES, and maybe you have a little spreadsheet. You jot them down, and from day to day, you track it. Okay, here's how I did on YM. Here's how I did on, on Roosty. Here's how I did on whatever, you know, whatever. Here's how I did on ES. And you track that every day, every day, a few days, a week, a month, and a pattern starts to appear where it becomes clear to you that you lose your keister on ES, Nazi kicks your total butt, Russell you clean up on. I'm just doing a hypothetical example. Who knows what your results are going to be? Maybe crude, whatever. And then YM, eh, you kind of do okay, 50-50. So if that's the scenario, that's telling you to go with what? Whatever instrument has the highest win rate. Now let's get back to the subject at hand. Does everybody see how to do that? Please pinky swear with me and the entire team that you're going to at least do that tomorrow. You're going to try it. You're going to go in there when you're done, and you're going to assess how you did on each of the instruments you traded. Pinky swear. I'm telling you, I'm giving you gold nuggets here to try to make you money. If you don't assess what you're doing in what instruments, you're never going to make money in the long term. You're going to, you're destined to fail. I'm, I'm throwing you nuggets here, okay? All right, now let's talk about something else here. So we taught, we pinky sweared on that, and we, we said that instrument selection is key and critical to your long-term success, so your assessments are going to help you sort that out. It's not going to be some random feely thing. You know, if you're doing a random feely thing, you need to stop that. You need hard stats to go with. We need to minimize the number of trades, and we're only going to work the optimal setups. You might be a deep retracement person. I love deep retracements, Charles. I see a deep retracement. I nail those things 90% of the time. Well, then guess what? That's your optimal trade setup. Go with it. And just try to trade that for a few days or a week. And then go into your assessments. After you determine your optimal setup, pick the instruments you're going to try. Maybe there's two or three of them. I wouldn't suggest more than three or even two, really. And then you're going to do your assessments. Within one week of doing that simple program, by this time next week, sitting here Thursday evening next week, I should be able to ask the question of every single one of you, and you should be able to say, you know what, Charles? I find out I'm really good at YM. I don't know why. I just am. I, I can see the trades. I nail the trades. I only took mid-band trades. They all worked out. I had one, I had like two losses the whole week. All right? Well, look, Dennis, there's quite, there's some of you that do this already. Good. Yeah, you know, I said this months ago, remember? Maybe it was like a year ago I said to do that. I don't, some of you are still doing it. That's cool. All right. Now, I want to I wanna move forward like this. I'm going to do it in two ways. I'm, a, I'm just going to assume for the rest of this webinar that all you want to see is mid-band trades. And we're going to work on that. And then we're going to fine-tune exactly how to take a mid-band trade. No dinky-dinky, I think if we're going to winky-winky, here's how we're going to do it. No, we're going to talk in detail about how you take these trades. Okay? First, let's do an exercise to make sure you're still awake because I hear some snoozing out there. Let's do a little exercise where I'm going to advance a Russell chart, and you tell me when you see a mid-band trade by t typing in a T. Are you ready? I think this was this morning, but I might be wrong. Stand by. Let me go back. Let me find out what day we're on here. Today was Today's the 9th, right? Okay, this was yesterday. Let's do yesterday, and then we'll do today. Tell me when you're ready. You don't even have to say whether it's long or short. You don't have to make it you don't have to say anything about it. I'm going to advance the chart and when you say see a mid-band trade, assuming that that's your optimal go-to trade setup, you type in a T. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Starting right now. And don't type in a T now cuz I haven't started yet. Okay? Here we go. Here we go. We're testing your ability to Okay, I'm going to blow the chart up so you see it better. Is that better? Can you see the can you see the bars better? Is that better? Is that better? Greg, can you see it? Okay, those are huge. Can you see it now? Yes? Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to advance it like we're we're in um well you should you see should see the chart. This is about as big as I can make it or it's not going to make any sense. Let's 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 try to let's try to move forward here. 
We're testing your knowledge of mid-band trade setups. And we're going to pretend we're looking at it in real time. This would have been yesterday around 7.45 a.m. Pacific time. Here we go. I'm advancing the chart. Looking for mid-band trades. Hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Dang, nabbit. Rascally wabbit. Hold on. Some of you have already typed in a T. Now, I ask you, team, we are looking for mid-band trades. Does anybody in this room see a mid-band trade right now? This is what Russell is doing right now in this chart. What is this called? What is it doing? What is that called in terms of price action? What is that? When a market does that, it is doing what? Not a shotgun. Some of you are new. Some of you might not know this, and that's perfectly acceptable. If you don't know, it's okay. We don't judge here. We try to help you. This is an, in a price action is called the thrust. Okay, let's go back. Let's, let's make sure we are all on the same page. This is called the thrust movement. Thrust. Thrust equals what? Push in a given direction. So let's put that in. In the direction of the trend. Oops. Here, let's do it like this. This is going to be a little bit better so you can see it better. in the direction of the trend. I'm going to leave it at that, but I'm going to come back to this box. The thrust is the push in the direction of the trend. If the trend is down, what is the direction of the thrust? If the trend is down, trend downtrend, the thrust part of the move is in which direction? Down. In the case of an uptrend, where the market is going up, what is the direction of the thrust? Up. It's really simple. That's all you got to remember on that. Downtrend, the thrust is down. And here's the most important thing about the thrust. Never, ever trade the thrust. This is another nugget you got to remember. Ever, never, never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, trade the tr thrust. Move. This is another nugget that you just hold on to. The, I'm throwing some bones to you here. If you remember the three or four things that are critical, and I'll recap them before we wrap. I'll recap them. There's three or four things you want to take away from here. What happens is this, is you pull the trigger here. In the case of this movement here, you're watching this go up. And I know psychologically, I used to go, I went through this for a long time. I know. I still do. Everybody, it's natural. Don't worry about it. You're watching it go up. You're watching it go up. You're watching it go up. You're thinking, man, this thing's going to the moon. I better jump on here. It's going up. It's going up. Man, I, I, I better get in. I'm miss It's a 100 tick move. God darn it. I'm going to miss it. Up here, going up, going up, going up. And guess what? Guess what you do? Right here, right in here, you're convinced that the market, you, it took all this time, all this time for you to get convinced that this market is going up. And so what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do up here? Way up here, after it's moved all the way up, what do you do? You pull the trigger. You hit market buy, and you jump in right near the top. Now, when it goes up and it hits the top up here, what do you think is going to happen? After a big move up, what is no, what is the what is probably going to happen? It's going to go keep going up and never come back. If you were a betting person and you wanted to put money on it, what would you put your money on? What it's, what it's going to do? It's going to pull back. 
<laughs> the odds are in your favor that at some point it's going to pull back. We don't know how far it's going to pull back, but it's going to pull back because of the law of nature of trading. There's going to be profit taking. Everybody who was long from lower levels is going to want to take profits, and that's going to have a downward draft on it. Now, here's your market order right at the apex. It starts to do what? Double top, triple top, babanga. So many traders. I, Charles, the market knows when I get in. I don't know how. Every time I pull the trigger, it pulls against me and I get stopped out. What is going wrong? I've lost 12 trades in a row because of this. I get in, I get in, I get a 12 tick stop and it nails it, pulls right back, pulls right back, and then gosh darn it, the thing takes off in my favor. El Slamo. Please, if I am describing you, you've got to stop doing this. You have to stop buying the thrust. Here is the retracement. So, listen, I don't want to be too rough on you guys. You know, I'm kind of excited about things tonight. Things are going really well. We made some pretty good money today. This is the thrust. Just please, pinky swear, you're never going to buy that anymore, okay? You're going to wait for some kind of pullback. All right, let's continue our exercise. So I'm going to do that. If anybody calls out a thrust move again, I'm going to stop it and correct it because you got to fix that part of what you're doing. All right, remember, we're looking for mid-band trades. I'm going to continue to advance the chart. You type in a T when you see one. Here we go. Okay, now we're at uh, 8.17. 8.17 a.m. Pacific time here on the West Coast. Okay, continue to advance the chart. Continue to advance the chart. Okay, we're at 8.24 a.m. Pacific. 8.24, 8. I'm trying to expand the chart, make it a little bigger for you there. 8, 8.30. We spent about five minutes down here. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. Now, look, I'm going to stop it right there. Now, some of you got this. Some, some of you might be watching football or playing with your dog. I understand. There was two trade setups here, okay? Okay. This one is considered a deep retracement where you go almost to the outermost band. I think Gary calls that a phantom. You can call it a deep retracement. You can call it pulling into support. It doesn't matter what you call it. The bottom line is that this is the trade right here. This bounce. I'm going to come back to that. And then did the did the market at 8:34 pause at the mid band? Is this a mid band trade? Yes or no? Right here. Is that a mid band trade? Yes or no? On the Russell? Yes or no? This right here. These bars right here. Yes. For goodness sakes, I, I, we went to Wikipedia and created a mid-band page and said this is the ideal, perfect trade at the mid-band. The picture would look like this. It doesn't get any better than that. Now, look, I want to tell you something here. And I had this come up today in a conversation. The question was this. How do we know how to draw the box and how do we know whether the market is done retracing or it's still retracing or it's bouncing or I should be getting in or getting long or how do I figure all this stuff out when it's flying at me in real time? Let's talk about it because all retraces are not created the same. Let's look at different types of retraces and how you can tell what they're doing. You have what I would consider to be a minimalist retracement where you don't get very many bars. Let's look at examples of that. Technically speaking, this is an acceptable trade entry and it's considered a shallow entry because you close below stealth. Or no, that one's not acceptable. We're not below stealth and we're not below line six. That's not acceptable. 
However, this one is acceptable. Now, here's what I do. Here is what I do. Here's what I do. I'll just tell you what I do. Can you see? Here, here, I'm going to do Here's how I'm going to do it. Here, here's how I'm going to do it. Here we get the double top. Hits it, 85.50, hits it again. And then notice this sequence of bars here. What are they doing? Are they closing up or down? The sequence of bars right here, are they closing up or closing down? Right here, these bars that I'm pointing to with this little arrow thing. Down. So when we set in an uptrend that the retracement is down, this is the retracement, part of the retracement, yes? The bars are closing down. Now, which one of these bars reverses and starts to turn up? This one? This one? This one? Which one? Which one of these bars reverses and starts to turn up? Which one? A, B, C. No, no, let's do it this way. A, B, C. Which one of the bars are reversing? A, B, C. That's, probably, that's partially, a, that's somewhat of a trick question. All right, the answer is C. Now, I can't tell by the formation of this bar. It could have been B. I can't tell from this whether this bar closed down or up because it's a full bar and there's no wick. It's quite possible B closed up. In that case, it would be B and C. Now, what I like to do is I like to hear bar by bar explanation of how I look at a retracement. And this is how it works. And most of the time, this is how this is going to play out. There are exceptions to it. Can you see how when you go down in the retracement that you have the tops of each one of these bars? As the retracement is occurring, these bars, the tops of them, form the, box, the top of what will ultimately be your box or a limit order to buy because we're getting long here, right? So if it, we're not going to let it bounce here or here because we haven't come deep enough, so that doesn't count. Here you got it here, and here you got it here. So there's two places to draw the box. A tight box, and I'm talking about an object trader region box, or a limit order, would go right here. That is the most extreme tight box, and you would be filled on the close of that bar right there. If you go looser and you want to see more bars bounce and not just one bar bounce, you want to see two bars bounce, then the top of your box would be right there. You wouldn't go down to this last one. Let's do another example. And show how this can help you or hurt you. If you are tight when you – here, let me leave, the, let me leave this in, the tight one. Arguably, you get in a bar quicker, which is a couple of ticks. Let's see in some cases whether that helps you or hurts you. Let's do the same exercise over here. Okay, here's our top. We don't really start counting until we get through line six and the mid band. For those of you that are brand new and visiting us, the stealth line is this line right here. That's the green line. We have to close at least below that. Okay, we have to close below line six. So we have bars closing below here. So as you come down, you're putting the top of your box. If you put the top of your box here, two, three bars up, you never got filled long, and that never turned into a trade. However, if you came down here, it's hard to say whether that bar would have filled you or not because it actually reversed and closed down. But you see what I'm doing here, right? Can everybody see what I'm doing on these retracements? You're coming down. You're coming down. The retracement. Now, let's say you didn't get filled here. Let's do it again. Close down, down, down. You can go all the way down here, or you can go here. If you went here, 
And it, what I'm describing to you is the top of the box with that line. I'm showing you how to visualize the top of the box because I get this question all the time, all the time. How do you draw the box? Where do you draw the box? And how do you know that the market is bouncing? How do I know it's bouncing here? How do I know it's bouncing at the mid band? How do I know it's bouncing down here? I'm answering that question. Like I said, the advantage of having the tighter box is you get a, a better fill. Okay, you get in usually a bar earlier than a, a looser box. If you had a looser box here, you probably didn't get filled until, I want to say this bar right here. Tighter box, you're filled on this bar. Looser box, you're filled on this bar. Everybody see that? Now, let's go to the mid-band. I'm going to really blow this up. Can you see how these bars are going up and down around the mid-band? Which one of these bars is the highest bar in the formation? I'm going to give you three choices again. Are you ready? A, B, or C? Which bar is the highest bar in the formation just above the mid-band? A, bar B or bar C, which is the highest? A, B, or C? B, right? Everybody sees B is the highest. Why do we care? Because the highest bar in the formation at the mid-band sets the top of your box. The top of your box trade entry is right here, right here. Every time, every single time when you draw a mid-band box, the top of the highest bar is your is the top of your box and your trade entry. Does everybody get that? I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. There's no ambiguity about that. Okay? If you're looking to take a mid-band box trade, that is it right there. Your box looks just like this. Just exactly like this. No difference, no lower, no higher right there just like that and you get in and you are filled long on the close of this bar right here i've had so many questions on that over the years in the past few months and it even even today it came up it comes up all the time and this is the secret sauce to trading this is it look you can do all those other things that we talked about right Instrument selection, never trading the thrust, you got that, right? Minimizing your trades, maximizing your gains, you know, all this other stuff we talked about here. Instrument selection, where's my other word? Where's my other things over here? Where do, where'd those go? All that other stuff, all of it. You can do all of that. But if you don't know where to get in the trade, you're going to get creamed, right? Here it is. Optimal trade setups, mid-band trades, only look for this. Trade management, going into your account thing, looking up your stats and just how you're doing, all that stuff. But the bottom line is this. You've got to learn how to take that mid-band trade if you're going to trade it. You have to learn how to do it. You have to learn how to do that. This is the secret sauce. This is what's going to make you and lose you money. This is where the rubber meets the road. Entry is everything. I can't overemphasize that enough. If you don't get the right entry, the rest of it doesn't matter. I, I don't know how else to say it. If, if if I was counseling you, and I am, and you're you know sort of a mid mid development trader, you've done it for a while, you're still learning a little bit, maybe a beginner, even a little bit advanced. Practice the entries, practice, practice, practice the entries. If you can nail the entries with a high degree of certainty, the rest will fall into place for you. Targets, stops, trade management, all that sort of stuff. It'll all fall into place for you. If you can't practice them, I would do replay. I would do replay a million times. Let those bars come back and forth. Look at that trade. How would I take that? Look at that trade. How would I take that? I'm looking over here to the right, right here. I'm going back and forth. You look at that trade, how would I trade? You don't have to do a bunch of fancy replay. You can do it just like that. Pick the instrument. How would I get in that? And you go and you diagnose it. Let's look at another one. Is that helping? 
Yeah, if you're if you're if you're John, if you're taking if you if the run is up, the trend is up, and you put a mid band box, you are only taking longs, long only, no shorts, on your on your um, object trader, the button says LE, long entry only. The SE is turned off and the reversal is turned off, long only in uptrends. You set the top of the box. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Does the location of the bottom of the box matter when you're long only? The bottom of this box here. If you're drawing a region box or you're putting limit or buy orders in. Does the bottom matter when you're when you have a long entry only? Does the location of the bottom of the box, if you're drawing region using Object Trader tool, matter? No. Because you're not taking shorts. Now the reason we do that is the fa as follows: If you had short enabled in an uptrend, and the market just happened to wick, or, uh, just happened to close below the box. And then babambo, off it goes. You would be filled short here and get stopped out. So you don't want that. In an uptrend, you're taking longs only. What's the exception to that? Yeah, your entry long in this example, John, is the close of that bar right there. Yeah, no, it, have to, it has to close above the highest bar in this collection here. You want to do another one? Open, that's right. The exception to this is is is, is uh, market open, crude pit opens, news, 6.30, 6, 6 a.m. on crude, news at 7 a.m., Fed announcements, um, uh, what is that, uh, non-farm payroll numbers in the pre-market. These are exceptions. You can get V-tops and V-bottoms. You can look for trend reversals, okay? But if you want to play it safe, go with the trend. Swim upstream. Swim downstream. Stay with the trend. Whatever the flow is, if the trend is down, you're taking shorts. You want to do another one? Okay, let's do another one. Let's do a couple more. Let's do a, let's do a couple mid-band trades. Let's do a couple mid-band trades together, okay? Let's go find some mid-band trades. And we'll, we'll, first I'm going to see if you can First, I'm going to see if you can call a mid-band trade by typing in a T, and then we're going to talk about we're going to talk about entry. Now, for those of you that came in late, I saw quite a few came in late. What we're doing uh, this exercise is as follows: We have had a discussion shortly after this webinar opened, and it was determined that the consensus of the team was everybody likes trades at or around the middle band. And so, what we're going to do for the, in the short term. Next couple of days, next week, whatever, however long it works, we're just going to look for mid-band trades, and we're going to determine the best instrument to trade using our account log. Right? I'm going to keep track of how we're doing. Now, I'm going to advance this chart in real time. Uh, this would be around 9.30 yesterday, and you tell me by typing in a T when you see a mid-band trade. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, here we are. It's 9.42 a.m. Pacific. Okay, this is the Russell RTY, $5 a tick, traded on CME through your data feed with your broker. Okay, now we're at uh, 9.51. Let's blow up the chart a little bit. I want to make these bars really big for you. Okay, now you're at 9.52. Nine fifty-eight. It's been about six minutes here. Ten oh two. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. Some of you got it. Not a lot of you, but some of you did. I'm not gonna name names. Let's talk about how this trade set up and how you would have gotten in using our previous exercise of bar closings and highest bar in the formation. Here is the double top. So that is the top. Here is the first bar closing down. Here's another bar closing down. 
I'm going to pause right here. With this bar closing down, is this a legitimate trade entry, yes or no? This bar right here. If a box formed right here, could you take it, yes or no? Let's say hypothetically a box started to form here and some bars started oscillating right, right in here. Is this a legitimate trade setup, yes or no, per our criteria of entry? No. Not even the shallowest retracement is it meet, which is a close below stealth, no check. Close below line six, no check. Not a trade. This bar closes down. This bar closes down. So we're following the bounce with our top of bar formation line. Now, as you approach the midband, bars are going to start oscillating around the midband. Uh, and we'll look at other formations. Sometimes they'll sit here on top of it. Sometimes they'll wick it. Sometimes they'll go just one bar close below it and then go up. So when you when you look to enter long on a midband box, I'm going to ask you a question: Where the top of the box is? Is the top of the box located at A? This is I'm now redetermining where your long entry is going to be at looking at the formation at the midband. B. or C. Where is the top of your region box from object trader or limit order, however you choose to enter long in the market? Is the is the entry on this long trade at the mid band A, B, or C? None. That's not correct. This is a long. This is a, this is a, this is a, this is a uh, textbook mid-band bounce. This is a perfect trade. This is the kind of thing you should be looking for all morning long, right here. When we say take mid-band trades, I'm talking about this right here. This is a, this is a good one. A, B, or C. All right. Here's how this works. C is very aggressive. It's like we talked about before. If you if you if you follow the letter of law where the top of the most aggressive candle is, then you would go all the way down into here. Long only long only in case the bars continue to excuse me, close down, you would not be filled short. Long entry only, just like the other trade. Trend is up. Long entry only. I think we all agree C would be a very aggressive entry, uh, and you would be filled along on the close of this bar right here. Now, B, I like to go with with I like I usually like to go up a couple of bars myself. I rarely come down and do two bars like that. Normally, I've got to engulf at least three or four bars, and so the larger box, the, the mid-range box, would look something like this. And depending on how you drew it, you may or may not have been filled on that bar but you definitely were filled long on this bar right here, as was A. Yeah, this would be the top location of the box or a limit order. A limit order would be right-click, buy, stop, buy limit order. That's a limit order to get long. Now, if you got filled up here, you felt a little bit of heat. It pulled against you. If it pulled against you, let's suppose you missed it. Let's suppose that you missed all of this. Could you have reboxed it here like this and gone in on this candle? Is that acceptable? Could you do that? Want to pull back a little bit? Is that okay? Is that okay to do? Yeah, that's an ABC pattern, right? This is a good little this is a good little formation to keep in your hip pocket. What do we mean ABC? A is a little pop-up. In the case of the uptrend, it would be down in a downtrend, yes. B is a little pullback. It usually comes back to where it popped out. Happens all the time. In fact, sometimes they go deeper. Sometimes they come all the way and check in here. Sometimes they go real shallow, a couple of bars. Could you jump back in here? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. A, B, Cs are totally. And what's C? What's the C leg? C leg is the push back up. There's C. A, B, C. Happens all the time. All right, you want to do another instrument. We got about a little less than 10 minutes. What do you want to see? Let's do some more mid-band trades. Let's get something else up here other than the Russell. 
What do you want to see? Let's cast a vote. Cast a vote tonight, team. Pick your instrument. What do you want to see? And I will bring it up. You want to see YM? You want to see crude? You want to see gold? Whatever the consensus of the team is, that's the charts I'll put up, okay? Uh, ooh, we got a mixed bag here. Got a whole slew of YMs and a whole slew of crudes. One ES. All right, looks like the consensus from the team here tonight is YM and crude before we run out of time. All right, let's do this. Let's look for some, some mid-band trade setups on YM. Ready? I'm going to drag the chart over. Here we go. I'm going to give you an easy one and then a hard one. Which one do you want first? <laughs> the easy one, huh? Of course, everybody wants the easy one. All right, are you ready? You want the hard one first? No, no, let's start with the... the, the uh... Yes, we trade $5 instruments, Greg, because, because it's less risk. Yeah, the, that's a good way to look at that. It, it, you know, everybody says, "Well, with a ten dollar instrument, you can make tw for a tick of movement, you can make twice as much money." Well, yeah. What's the flip side of that? What's the flip side of that? Yeah, you can lose twice as much money just as fast. <laughs> you want to cut your teeth on the five dollar instruments? So that's just all I'm going to say about that. You really do. I mean, you can move up eventually to the to the to the uh, to the ten dollar tickers, but but you really want to. You really want to stick with the five baggers for now. Is everybody ready? Here we go. YM. Now, this is late in the morning. This is going into the close of the market on for the equities. Uh, 115 is when they close here in California. Uh, would that be 415 back east? Here we go. You're typing in a T when you see a mid-band trade. Are you ready? Here we go. YM. Here, let me blow this up. It's kind of all scrunched together. There, is that better? Can you see it better? So we're focused on the right-hand side of the chart. Right-hand side of the chart. Here we go. We're going. 12.50. We're going into the close. Looking for mid-band trades, remember? Okay. There's 12.51. We got just about 15, 20 minutes till the close of the equity markets. Hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. No. No, I, I'm not going to let that fly by. I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to name names. We are looking for mid-band trades. Does anybody in the room here agree that this is a mid-band trade? Or here? Is this a mid-band trade? Anything here. Is any of this a mid-band trade? No. No, you've got to learn that. I can't let everybody keep thinking that this is this is not, if you're taking mid-band, this is not acceptable. No. This is another thrust, for Pete's sake. Here is the first thrust. Here is the minimal retracements, which didn't reach the mid-band, so that is a no-no. And then you go down and you thrust it through a fresh low. If you are thinking this is a trade entry, then you've got to really go back and assess your your trade uh, visual, visualization. You've got to work on that hard because that you're still thrusting down in a downtrend. Let's continue on. Okay, now you're at 12.59. Uh, just literally, literally in the last 16 minutes of market trading, still tradable, still acceptable to take trades here before 115 Pacific. Okay, now you're at 104, market getting ready to close. There's 112 coming into the very close of the market. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. 
most of you, uh, some of you who I would uh, s categorize as uh, early, early uh, um, adopters or early, early visualists who see trades started to type in T when these bars formed right here, and you were correct. That was the beginning of the of the uh, mid band trade setup. Some of you didn't type in a T until way over here, and that's perfectly acceptable because it stayed at the mid band for a good 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, was there enough time to see and take this trade? If you had 15 minutes to watch it, is that enough time to see and take a trade? <laughs> yeah, I wish they were all 15 minutes. Now let's go get a cup of coffee and a Coke and some fries and come back and take the trade. Good. All right, tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a tough one on crude, and then we're going to wrap up. Okay? You ready? Stand by. I'm going to give you some tough ones. Give you some tough ones. And I'll see if you can spot them. I'm going to throw a little, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to throw a little monkey wrench at you. You ready for a monkey wrench? Anybody ready for a monkey wrench? You feel like getting monkey wrenched? Let's look at crude today and see what you think. Okay, we'll do from the pit open. I'm just going to crank through the whole day. And when you see trades, legitimate what you think are mid-band trades, and you don't have to say long or short. You don't have to say anything. You have to call anything. You just type in a T. Here's crude starting at the pit open. Ready? We're going to do this together. We're going to recreate the day on crude. Here we go. Okay, here's six. Here's five fifty-six. So Gary just opened the live room right here. Just to orient, give you a quick orientation. Remember, you're typing in a T when you see a mid-band trade that you would take. Ready? Let's pretend this is tomorrow morning and we're look, all looking at the chart in real time together, and it's going to look like this. Ready? Here we go. Pull the bars up a little bit more. There, that's better. Okay, there we go. 602. 608. 621. 625. I know I'm going fast. We're pretending like this is what you're going to see tomorrow morning if you want to trade crude. you got to get in the crudy boat. If you're going to jump in a crudy boat, you got to know how to trade the crude. It's not some namby-pamby thing. This is a serious instrument. Six fifty-seven, seven o'clock. Seven oh nine. You've been trading about an hour on crude. 719. Room still open. 735. I'll go through when we close the room. I'll stop when we close the room. It's like right around 8 o'clock. We'll go about another half an hour here. Remember, you're calling out trades. You're calling out trades here when you see them. 745. 8 o'clock. E13. E30. E45. 9 o'clock. Pretty choppy day on crude, huh? <laughs> All right, that's enough. I think we've had enough. I think you see, you get the point. You know, some days, you know, I'll tell you, you know, some days you can look at crude and it's smooth as silk and it'll run 120 ticks and pull back real nice to the mid-band, it'll be like halfway up or whatever and get a chance to catch the last 60, 80, whatever it takes. And then some days, excuse me, crude is a choppy mess. I take crude t trades once in a while, but it's pretty, it's pretty rare. I, I don't really trade crude that much, truth be told. 
because I you normally I'm trading two, three, four equities. You know, sometimes four equities at a clip. I'll have ES, Russell, YM, and Nasdaq open all simultaneously, juggling multiple contracts. So I got my hands full. Um, so you know, throw you know, truth be told, to put crude and gold in the mix is tough. I still look for trades, and occasionally I'll take them. But um, let's recap what happened here. So some of you typed in a T when this rollover occurred here, and that is correct. That was a mid-band short entry. That was a good call. Some, some of you, most of you got it. You see that everybody didn't give you much, but that's a legitimate kiss and roll on, uh, on the mid-band there. Now, right around 630, you had another mid-band box here. A lot of you caught this one as this one formed. Now, you're within the first hour trading on crude, half an hour trading after the pit open. It's acceptable to go either way. From the background color, it looks like it should have gone short, but it didn't, and it actually gave you a nice long trade here. See it? If you let it go both ways. Let's, let's carry on. Here it blammed right through the mid-band, so you didn't get anything here. See it? No box. See how it didn't pause? So this is what I'm talking about. So if you're, say, you're saying... Well, Charles, if it gets to the mid-band and, it, it, and the bars don't stop and it doesn't form anything and it just goes blambo, is there any box here? Is this a box, yes or no? Is there any pause here to draw anything? Could you even put an order here with our little line with our little line thing, visualizing the line? Remember our line thing with the bar, with the bar swing? Still closing down, closing down, closing down, closing down. Even here, it never bounced, right? No, there's no entry here. Okay. Comes down, comes down, double bottom. Some of you typed in a T here, and that is correct. That's another mid-band box right there, like that. Didn't give you much. There's another one right here. A few of you caught this one. It's choppy as heck. Didn't give you much. Bipped you in. Again, another one right here. See it? Another one right here. Some of you caught this one. See it? Another one right there. That didn't give you anything. Now, this is where crude can get you. I want to show you something here. This is where crude can get you good. Notice how if you'd drawn a box here and you got filled short on one of these bars here. I don't know if you really even got a scalp off. And it bipped down right to line two, right down in here, and then gazunga, right up through your face. Blammo. And it just starts whipping around here. Now, how do you handle a situation like that where you get into a trade, it goes a little bit in your favor, maybe you get the scalp, maybe you don't, and it starts to precipitously move against you? What do you do? You're short. You're short from in here somewhere. Or one of these bars, whatever, you're short. And you come down, it's in your favor, you know, you're up five, four ticks, five ticks, six ticks. Then it starts to go away. Now you're break even, break even, you're starting to lose some money. What do you do in a situation like this? Do you wait until it runs all the way up here and take full stop out? Hmm? You wait until it goes and you say you had 12 ticks stop. Two lot on. Sitting way up here somewhere. And you wait for it to go get it? Hit the what button? Hit the what button? Close. Hit the close button. Get out. Get out of the chopper. <laughs> don't let a whipping market get you like this, okay? You get out. When this thing's coming against you, you don't care. Whatever. Close. Fanga. You want to minimize your losses. That is critical and key to your survival. Don't get into a hope trade. That's the worst. It starts coming against you. You're upside down. You move the stop. Oh, it's going to reverse. It's going to reverse. It's going to reverse. Then you let it take it right here, and then it reverses and go right down to where you were. I got to wrap. What? Let's recap. What are the most important things to take away from this webinar tonight? I'm going to put them back up here so they're ingrained into your brain. The goal is to maximize your profits.
Here, I'll just put gains. Minimize loss. And loss equals risks, which equals trades. Ideally, you would find one and done, one or two and done trades all day long. You find the perfect optimal mid-band setup, whatever trade you like. You, you, you properly place your entry. You manage the trade. You make money, and you get it done. Rinse, repeat. What's the next thing we're going to put in here? Only trade your optimal setup. Now, most of you said that was for a period of time. Now, for you, for you, for everybody in here, for a while, for some span of time. Now, if you're on the only trading the optimal trade program, and somebody in the room says that's a phantom trade, do you take it? Yes or no? If you say to me, look, I want to learn how to trade mid-band trades like an expert. I want to make money every day. I'm tired of losing money. I'm going to trade the mid-band only for a week. And then I'll trade. I'll learn other trades. And I'll learn all sorts of trades and start doing all manner of other things. No. This is a shallow retracement. I'm going to get in here in this big, huge uh, monster uptrend. Do you get in? No. At least for this assessment period. How are you going to assess how you do? What are you going to do at the end of every day? You're going to go to your account performance tab. Account performance tab. And look at the instruments you trade. Uh, at the instruments you traded. This is going to tell you what your performance is every day. Remember I showed you. Everybody saw that, right? Everybody know how to do that? You go to the account performance tab. I'll show you two seconds. I'll show you again. Right here. Oh, I can't do it because I got this thing on. Here, let me, let, me, let me put this up and then I can do it real quick for you. This is how you're going to get your house in order. Control center. Account performance. Pick the account you want to look at, pick the instrument you want to look at, hit advanced, and then hit generate. Pick the dates you want to look at, time frames you want to look at, hit, and it will show you exactly how you did, total net profit, how you did on long, shorts, your performance, number, what your drawdown was. You need to track this every day. How are you going to know how you're doing on each of these instruments unless you do this? You're not. You're not ever going to know it. You have to do this every day. And the final thing is, whatever your optimal trade setup is, whatever it is, I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a mid-band, it whatever it is, you need to practice, practice, practice. I cannot overemphasize this. That's why I'm saying it three times. Your trade entries. Just like we showed. You see how easy that is? How to toggle back and forth on the chart? You see it? You go back and forth. You go back and forth. It's it's repetition for your trading mind. It's pattern recognition over and over and over and over. And 10,000 times you see it, you're going to know it like the back of your hand. Okay, Ben, Mario, John, David, Peter, Toby, Paul, everybody. This is a wrap. Please try to do these things in the next week. When we come back next Thursday... We're going to see how you did, okay? So that's a, this is your homework session. This is your homework for the next week. Next Thursday, we're going to get together, and I'm going to ask everybody, how did you do? Okay? All right, have a good evening, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow morning in the webinar. And the last thing I have to say is this. Go Niners. Go 49ers. They're playing Dallas tonight. Yeah, David S., let's make some money tomorrow morning. Chuck, if you're still here, Greg, have a good one, everybody. Take it easy. See you in the room. Adios.